بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو ایوری ون ویلکم بیک ٹو دا پی ایل تھری ہنڈریڈ ایگزام پریپریشن سیریز ویئر وی آر ایکسپلورنگ دا سیکنڈ لرننگ پیتھ ماڈل دا ڈیٹا ان دس ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا ٹاپک آئیڈینٹیفائی امپلیسڈ میجرس اینڈ ریپلیس ود ایکسپلیسڈ میجرس وچ از پارٹ آف دا سیکشن کریٹ ماڈل کیلکولیشنس بائی یوزنگ ڈیکس سو ناؤ وی ہیو کم ٹو دا دیٹ پوائنٹ ان دا پریپریشن where we are going to discuss DAX. So DAX is the language that is used inside of Power BI to create formula and logic. We have already had a look at the M script, which was the language of Power Query. But now we are going to spend some time discussing DAX. So DAX stands for Data Analysis Expression. And this is the language which is used inside of Power BI to create all kinds of calculations. Before I start explaining the topic of this video, let me just very briefly mention that as part of the PL300 syllabus, we are going to cover a very limited portion of DAX. So DAX itself is a very vast topic and, and a lot of stuff can be covered, but we are going to just limit ourselves to the topics that are related to the PL300 examination. So now let's go to the Power BI environment and see what kind of calculations can be made using DAX and then we are going to talk about the measures and then further what are implicit measures and how these can be replaced with explicit measures. So here I am inside the Power BI environment and I have opened the Maven market report that we have created in previous videos. So in order to create DAX calculations, you have areas in all the three uh, in all the three tabs, the, all the three major portions in the Power BI reporting environment. So if you are inside the report view like I am, so this is the portion which is of our interest, which is saying calculations and here you are seeing new measure and quick measure. If you are within this environment and just click on one of the tables, any of the tables on the right side in the data pane, then you are going to see another view which is kind of the same but here you are going to see a new column and new table. So wherever you are, similarly you are going to see the same view if I go in the data view, you are going to see the same thing and even in the model view, you are going to see the same kind of thing. So does not matter wherever you are, you can go and start creating calculations using the DAX language. So coming back to the topic of this video, we are going to discuss what are measures and what are implicit measures and what are explicit measures. So before I actually go and talk about that, let's go to the table view first and have a look at the transactions data table. So remember, this is our fact table. And as per the definition of the fact table, we should have foreign keys. And then I have one column, which is a quantitative column or a numerical column, which is quantity. So I am going to explain you one concept, which is the basics of the DAX language here. So what I'm going to do here right now is that we are going to utilize the, the canvas, the canvas here, uh, which is the main report view. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to select uh, this quantity column and I'm going to drag this quantity column here in this visualization pane and drop it here inside this values area. So as soon as I drop it here, you see that a visualization is created on the canvas, which is by default a table visualization. So we are going to talk about the visualizations in the next learning path. But this is how you, you know that this is an area which has been highlighted and it is the table visual. So we are not going to talk about the table visual. I'm just going to focus here that as soon as I pull the quantity column, I am seeing something on the canvas and here the area is also changed from the values to the column. So this is one way. Another way is that I am going to just remove this visualization here. I'm going to see the same effect if I have just drag this quantity column and pull it directly onto the canvas. And here now, instead of the value that I saw, I am seeing a visualization. Again, this is a visualization and I can see what is this visualization. So this is a bar chart, which is highlighted here. So we are going to talk about both of these things here. But the thing is that you are going to see some kind of a result, which is 
uh, which which could be either a table or which could be either in the form of a chart but the important thing to note here is that we are not seeing quantity although i am pulling quantity but i am seeing what is called as sum of quantity so remember that once we were talking in in previous videos uh, especially in the first learning path i said that the power bi has this inherent behavior that if you have a numerical column then power bi tries to aggregate that numerical column so quantity here is an is a numerical column it is a quantitative column and power bi is trying to aggregate this column it is trying to aggregate whatever is in the column so the default aggregation in power bi is the sum aggregation so you are going to sum everything whatever is available in the in the particular in that particular column so again i am going to go just remove this here and i remove this from the canvas and i am going to go into the table view and i am going to just look at this quantity column so here you can see that they, this is a column which has the, the this particular tab, table has 269720 rows so for each row there is a quantity value but once i come here and i drag this quantity and i pull it here in the values field you see that this quantity is no longer there but it becomes a sum of quantity and here you can see the result of the sum of quantity which is 8833489 which is 833489 which is nothing but the sum of the quantity column so if you have this kind of a behavior in your power bi report and you pull a quantitative column does not matter what quantitative column it is and there is this aggregation which is applied then this whole thing here is called as an implicit measure if i just go and click on this drop down option here you are going to see that here is an area where i am seeing a lot of aggregation so the by default aggregation that has been selected is the sum but i can select any of the aggregations here or even i can select don't summarize so remember we saw this once we were looking at the table and column properties that we can specify the aggregation we can specify the summarization so aggregation or summarization here means the same thing so if you have this kind of a column and you pull this column onto the canvas or onto your uh, area where you are building the visualization then this thing is called as the implicit measure so now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to change this sum to an average so as soon as i change it to an average here you see that the instead of sum of quantity i'm seeing average of quantity and here it is giving me the average value of the entire column so previously it was summing all the values now it is doing the average similarly if i go and if, if i click on minimum i'm going to see the minimum value in the column and maximum and so on and so forth so this kind of a behavior is called as the implicit measure where some kind of a calculation is being created but it is being done implicitly and the only thing that we can do is that we can come here and we can just change the aggregation the type of aggregation that we can perform i can just come here and i can change the type of the aggregation so now we are going to look at the other topic of this video which is the explicit measure so we have looked at the implicit measure and implicit measure behavior we have seen that here we can come and we can change the aggregation so what is an explicit measure so the explicit measure is where we start writing the DAX code so we haven't written really anything in terms of DAX but for creating an explicit measure or you can say simply creating a measure in DAX whichever measure you are going to create it will obviously represent an explicit measure because you are going to write some kind of a DAX so if I am going to actually create something which mimics the same behavior as i have seen here then i am going to start writing dax and in, and in order to do that let me just first remove this from from this area in order to do that i am going to come here in this area so i am going to come here in this area and it says you have the option new measure we are going to look at quick measure in another video but for for the time being i am going to just focus on the new measure 
so before you actually create a measure just i am putting my mouse over here and it says write a dax expression that calculates a value from your data so just remember that you are once you are creating a measure it is always going to return a value and a value means that it is going to be a scalar value it is going to be just a number so we are going to explain uh, explore what is the core concept of uh, context in some of the other videos but here i am just uh, focusing on what is how do we create an explicit measure so before i actually do that let me just select a table here so if i select a table here then i know that this uh, measure i am going to create in this table so now i am going to go and click on this new measure option here and as soon as i go and click on this new measure a uh, formula bar is going to appear in a few seconds and this is the area where we can create or we can write our dax so it is saying measure is equal to so whatever measure we create there is an equality sign in between and on the left side there is a name of the measure and on the right side is the logic or the formula that we are going to build so let me just build a simple measure which is total quantity so i what i am trying to do is that i am going to trying to replace my sum of quantity instead of the implicit measure i want to just create one measure that just creates the sum i do not want that there is should be an option so how i can do that so i am going to use a function which says sum so we are going to have a look at these uh, functions uh, similar to sum in the next video but here i am just trying to explain that how we can create an explicit measure so now if i start uh writing here you you see that another window has opened which is called as the intellisense feature of dax so as soon as you start writing dax the power bi environment has this intellisense capability which helps you in writing dax and then there is this small area on top which here which is showing me some syntax and here it is says all the numbers in a column so it's saying that inside of sum you can mention a name of a column and it is going to add all the numbers in a column so what is the column that we were looking at so we know that we are looking at the quantity column so as soon as i start writing q u a it is starting to show whatever is possible from the intellisense capability but we are interested in this particular value which says transaction data quantity so outside the bracket we have transactions data which is the name of the table and inside the the square brackets we have the column so this is how you can actually uh, approach a column inside of power bi writing while writing dax that first you specify the name of the table and then you specify the name of the column so i'm going to just select here transactions data and inside that brackets there is quantity and then i'm going to close the brackets so now i have written my first dax statement and now i am going to press on enter so as soon as you press enter you are going to see that inside this area in the transactions data you see that a new thing is appearing which is which has this icon of a calculator and the name of this is total quantity so this is my first dax explicit measure that i have created so now let me just pull this total quantity into the same area where i pulled in the quantity and now you can see that it is showing me the same result on the canvas it is showing me the same result on the canvas but here now it is not adding anything uh, like sum or min or max or anything like that so it is exactly the same measure that i created and if i go and click on this drop down here again here i am not seeing that particular option which i was seeing earlier there are few other options which we are going to explore in detail in other videos so this total quantity is now my explicit measure and we always strive to to build explicit measures instead of the implicit measures and we are going to understand that while we are working some in some of the other uh, dax um, uh, measures in uh, in other videos but just remember that implicit measure is the measure which is associated with any numerical column 
that has been defined in your data and you have seen the behavior where we can just go and change the 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 aggregation but explicit measure allows you to define explicitly what is the mathematical function or what is the functionality that you are going to do so we are going to cover the basic mathematical and statistical functions in the next video so the focus of this video was to just tell you how you can create a measure how what are implicit measures and how you can replace the implicit measures with the explicit measures before i close this video i want to just highlight these three points here so if you are talking about implicit measures just remember that these measures cannot be used in other calculations we are going to cover this in future videos and in terms of explicit measures the most important thing to remember is context so any measure that you are going to create context is going to be the key thing and we are going to spend a lot of time covering what is context and then also remember this this point that measures are only calculated on demand power bi calculates the correct value when the user requests it so in order to understand this let me just go back to the power query editor and show you what i mean by calculated or demand so here i am back in the power bi environment and here you can see the total quantity is sitting inside this transaction data so let me just go and click on the table view here and inside the table view again i am seeing that this total quantity is showing up in the data pane but i am not seeing anything here all i am seeing here are the columns that were brought from the power query editor so this total quantity is nothing is is not sitting here it is not showing up in the data so this is what the concept of calculation on demand is that basically once you create a measure this is just like a variable sitting in the memory and once you pull this measure onto the canvas in any visual only then the calculation is computed so it is not taking up any space in the data model so that is the main thing that it is not taking up any space in the data model and it is only computed when you are you pull it onto the canvas and this is what is the calculated on demand uh, terminology that was that was just shown so just keep these few points in your mind so it this was a long video but uh, we had to cover something related to the to dax just remember these points and these points will be further explained and clarified in some of the uh, other videos that we are going to cover in this particular section so that's all for this video and i am going to see you in the next one